Punjabi is often considered a more difficult language to learn, not only because of its grammar or pronunciation, but because of the lack of tools available on the market. I have to say that I disagree with this perspective. Uh, quite a lot of resources are readily available so long as you have a credit card for Amazon or even a library card. In this video, I wish to discuss those tools which I consider to be the best for developing a student's command of the Punjabi language. That includes textbooks, readers, dictionaries, newspapers, websites, music, and movies. The first textbook which I'd like to discuss is Introduction to Punjabi, Grammar, Conversation, and Literature, written by Gurinder Singh Man, a professor down in California. Now, in my opinion, this is the absolute best Punjabi textbook available. The first half covers grammar, basic vocabulary, whilst the second includes an introduction to Punjabi literature, both poetry and prose. Now, the author makes a concerted effort to include lots of vocabularies on both sides of the border, and he's sure to kind of give a view of wider Punjabi culture, which is, which is wonderful, I think. So, for example, some readings in the first section cover weddings within Punjab's different religious communities. Now, the book uses Gurmukhi, which is the script used in India, but the author has expressed interest in including a Shamukhi component in the future, and Shamukhi, of course, being the script used in Pakistan. Now, the book isn't perfect. There's no answer key. Uh, and the readings in the second section can be quite difficult without the assistance of a professor or a tutor or a native speaker in general. It also doesn't include any audio. Uh, but even if you're studying without anyone's help, I'd recommend adding this book to your collection. I really do think it's the best introduction available out on the market. The next textbook is Colloquial Punjabi by Mangat Rai Pardwaj. Now, a new edition of this book was recently released, so the copy you pick up might differ slightly from mine. Um, but anyway, this is another comprehensive textbook which aims to focus a bit more on the spoken language. Its real strength, though, uh, kind of paradoxically you wouldn't expect this, uh, is the author's heavy use of formal linguistic terminology. So, if you're afraid of grammar, this book might intimidate you. Uh, if you happen to love grammar, use it. It is, explains certain concepts in ways much clearer than any other book on the market. You can trust me on that. Uh, the book contains a nice small selection of literature and has some wonderful audio. But the reference grammar is a bit small. Um, in general, the book isn't as comprehensive as the last book I just reviewed. Nevertheless, pick it up, flip through it, and see if it's for you. The next textbook is Teach Yourself Punjabi by Surjit Kalra, uh, Navdej Kaur Purewal, and Sue Tyson Ward. Now, the newest edition is actually entitled Complete Punjabi, A Teach Yourself Guide. I haven't seen this new edition once again. Uh, it's a solid textbook. Worthy of a look, includes a ton of audio, which is extremely useful for any learner, of course, especially with languages like Punjabi. Uh, but I don't quite think it measures up to the previous two books. I don't think the, it's, it's as well organized, basically. But, you know, give it a run, see how you feel. Maybe you'll prefer it. The last book I'd like to mention isn't actually a textbook. Uh, it's called Punjabi, A Descriptive Grammar by Tej Patia. Um, now, this book is uh, geared towards linguists, not students. So what I mean to say is you kind of need to have a background in academic linguistics, like a year in linguistics course in a university or a textbook or something, in order to fully appreciate this work. Uh, nevertheless, if you're a bit more academically inclined, you really like grammar, uh, open this book up. You might find some really interesting sentences. There's some great stuff in here. And uh, see what you can uh, pull out. Lastly, I'd like to quickly talk about books published in India. Uh, now, most Punjabi textbooks from Indian publishing houses are not really appropriate for English native speakers. Uh, they seem to be written from the perspective of Hindi speakers. Uh, so much is similar between Hindi and Punjabi that you can skip a lot over if someone already knows one or the other and is trying to learn the opposite language. But for us English natives, we need a lot more help in making sense of the grammar. Now, the books from India which I would recommend are the Punjabi study guides for high school students. These are the only real, solid, advanced Punjabi textbooks that, <laughs> that exist at all, really. Uh, there's no English included, so you already need to be at a decent level in your Punjabi, but they teach all kinds of proverbs, they teach you how to write letters, and all kinds of other great stuff. As far as I know, you can only buy these in India itself, uh, so you unfortunately won't find them online. Anyway, to summarize, keep away from the Indian textbooks, but check out the study guides. Let's move on to readers. Now, a reader is a collection of written texts followed by grammatical notes and a vocabulary list. These are the most useful tools to use once you complete a textbook, but you find that your vocabulary is still a bit limited. And there are about three modern Punjabi readers on the market right now that you should probably pay attention to. The first is by Ved Prakash Vatuk, 
and it's his Punjabi reader. It's available in two separate volumes. Uh, you can actually find this tool for free online, so that's great. Uh, the author uses Gurmukhi exclusively, but the text, I have to say, is a bit old with a bit of a blurry typeface going on, and uh, there are a lot of typos, so be on watch for those. Uh, I must say that using this tool without a teacher or tutor to help you along can be very frustrating, as the author has chosen texts which use a ton of dialectical forms. So there's quite a lot of words you might encounter which uh, may not be listed in the vocabulary section, nor in a standard dictionary. I used these texts very early in my study, but I was meeting with my tutor for two hours each day, and I could therefore get a lot of help with the tough spots, so my, my situation was an exception, you could say. Uh, you might want to hold off on these books if you find them really difficult. The next text is the Punjabi Newspaper Reader by Omar Kul and Madhubala. Uh, this is a wonderful introduction to Indian Punjabi newspaper language, which contains a lot of Sanskritic words. Uh, it contains full translations of each section, full translations, uh, not only the vocabulary listing grammar notes, uh, but be very, very careful of typos, as there are quite a few. There really are. You'll notice right away. The last reader is the Punjabi reader in the Arabic script, by which the authors mean Shamuki. Uh, this reader contains texts from Punjabi newspapers in Pakistan, and it's probably the best introduction to Shamuki after you've actually learned how to uh, read and write, once you learn the basics. It follows the same format as the Gurmukhi uh, Punjabi newspaper reader, which I just mentioned, and you can buy both of those books online through the website for the Dunwoody Press. I'll write that below. Unfortunately, no other readers are currently available in writing. There is, however, an extremely useful website named Scola, in which you can find recordings of the Punjabi news, accompanying transcripts, word lists, and all kinds of exercise questions. Uh, this is really a great way to train your ear and your, improve your reading speed, as you can follow along with the news uh, as the anchor speaks. You'll have to ask your local librarian if they have a subscription to this service, however, because it really is quite expensive. Dictionary is one of the most important tools when you're learning a foreign language. Now, if you've ever been on Amazon, you'd see that there are tons of dictionaries out there, but which dictionary should you buy? Well, for modern Punjabi, I would really say that there's nothing that matches the quality of the dictionaries published by Punjabi University in Patiala. Now, their Punjabi English Dictionary by Gurkirpal Singh Sekhon, it completely blows all of the competition out of the water. Uh, though there's quite a lot of room for improvement, it's really unlikely that the average student would be disappointed with this dictionary. And the best part about it is that it's available online, and I've included the link. Uh, note that the online search engine has a lot of glitches. Sometimes you search for a word, you spell it completely properly, uh, but it won't show up for whatever reason. Try your best to get your hands on a physical copy. Uh, it is available on Amazon. And, of course, you can buy it on campus if you ever happen to be in Patiala. The university publishes many other interesting dictionaries. Um, Malwai Kosh, for example, details the dialect of Malwa, while Lendi Kosh contains a lot of the words used in the Pakistani dialects of Punjabi. Uh, there's another dictionary which shows the history of words which have come into Punjabi through Arabic and Persian, but it doesn't contain any English, so your Punjabi has to be up to par first. As far as I know, you can only get all of these books I just listed from the university itself. Uh, now, you'll find a lot of English Punjabi dictionaries on Amazon, uh, but once again, I have to say they're not really up to par. Um, the volume published by Punjabi University, their English Punjabi dictionary is best, but I don't think you'll find it online. Uh, see below for the publishing information if you're looking for these books elsewhere. Let's talk a little bit about Punjabi newspapers. Now, the three largest Gurmukhi papers uh, published in India are Ajit, uh, the Punjabi Tribune, and Jagvani. Now, I've listed uh, all their websites below, and I have to say that Ajith really is the most popular, uh, and its writing style is also the simplest. But it's said to be biased in favor of the Shiromani Akali Dal, which is a political party in Punjab. Uh, personally, I like the Punjabi Tribune the most, but you really should read them and come to your own conclusions. Note that Punjabi newspaper language can seem intimidating at first, but it really is quite simple. Uh, you just have to learn the actual words that are used, all the vocabulary. And once you do, you'll notice that most articles actually follow a really predictable pattern. Uh, the first few weeks or months of reading will be really painful. I remember spending two or three hours on a single article when I first started. Uh, but with practice, everything will fall into place. Uh, I admit that I'm not knowledgeable about Pakistani Punjabi newspapers, really, but as far as I can tell, there's really only one with an online presence. It's called Lokai. Uh, the issues are actually quite small, but they make for good reading practice. Remember that if you live in an area of the world in which there's a huge Punjabi community, uh, they're obviously going to have a local paper. Uh, even if there are not 
that huge. They, they'll, they'll have access to some form of print media. So go to your local community center or house of worship and ask around, and people will probably give you some more information. The internet is full of useful links which will help you with your Punjabi. Let's start with some instructive links first. The most commonly available instructive material online teaches you how to read Gurmukhi. My favorite is the website hosted by Punjabi University, surprise, surprise, <laughs> and it contains tools which show you exactly how to write and pronounce each letter, as well as the rhymes children use to memorize the letters. There are games, quizzes, and much more. You may also want to use some worksheets for practicing your writing technique, so click the link shown here in the video description below. There are not any comprehensive programs online which teach Sa'amuki. Uh, I recommend you learn to read Urdu instead as the two operate on the exact same principles. They're really similar, so if you learn Urdu, you can read Shamuki pretty much. If you want a free Punjabi textbook, check out this link. It's what the American Peace Corps used to teach volunteers in the 60s who were headed for Pakistan. It doesn't contain any Gurmukhi or Shamuki. It's all Romanized. It's in the uh, English alphabet, you could say. So just jump right in. Also, there's lots of audio, which is great. So now you're not allowed to complain that money is preventing you from getting started with Punjabi. You've got what you need here. Uh, this website here gives a quick overview of Punjabi grammar, but it's not very comprehensive and it's a bit dense for those without a background in linguistics, but nevertheless I think you should check it out. Lastly, watch my video on pronunciation to help refine your accent. People lie when they say that people either just get an accent or they don't. It's not true. Uh, it's a skill, and it's a skill that you need to work on and develop, and in this video I show you how. Okay, so moving on from some instructional material, uh, let's talk about some fun stuff. Uh, the internet is full of Punjabi blogs and message boards, as well as music and movies, which we'll discuss a bit later on. Uh, but the holy grail of Punjabi online is this apna.org, or apna.org, actually. Uh, the website is full of free music, academic articles, scanned books, and much, much more. You could literally spend years consuming all of the material that's on this website, all for free. So you absolutely need to check it out. For blogs and online news services, there are really three websites particularly deserving of attention. Uh, the first is Suhi Saber. Uh, it's a joint project between Punjabis on both sides of the border, and it contains a lot of material, therefore, in both Shamuki and Gurmukhi. The quality of the posts really is superb. They interview a lot of famous people. You may also want to check out Sanja Punjab. Uh, it's uh, usually pretty literary in its content. And uh, as well, there's this Vichar website, which uh, primarily puts out Shamuki material. Uh, and as you can see, really, from these examples, the best Shamuki resources available are all online. There's not really all that much Shamuki being printed in the world, unfortunately, but online there's quite a lot going on. Music and movies. Really fun stuff. Now, Punjabi's music industry, it's huge. I'm sure you probably know that already if you're interested in the language. It really pulls far above its weight. Or, well, considering there are over 100 million Punjabis in the world, maybe uh, it's really just getting to the level it should be at. Uh, but this was all originally a bit more hidden. So, for example, um, many of Bollywood stars have Punjabi origins, and a lot of people involved in the industry in general. But these days, it's really all coming out into the open because um, Bollywood music and the pop is really in, totally in love with Punjabi. So you'll find it peppered into a lot of the music, a lot of the biggest hits in the industry right now. Uh, Punjabi music is available in many different forms. There's not just one kind. There, there are tons of genres. You know, there's pop, there's folk, uh, Bhangra, Western Bhangra, other kinds of Western fusion, whether it's like hip hop or rock, uh, traditional Sufi style music and Qawalis and all that. There's, there's tons of stuff out there. Now, Punjabi's, or I should say Punjab's movie industry, uh, in, in India at least, uh, it really hasn't been as successful. Uh, but it's turned out a, f a few excellent films over the years. There are a few that have been really good, which you should definitely check out. But that's a subject for another video. Uh, music and movies are really so important in building not only your cultural knowledge of Punjab, but in tuning your ear to the sound of the language. They're a fun, light way to add more Punjabi to your daily schedule. You really should be trying to surround yourself in as much Punjabi as possible. Uh, the use of dialects in this stuff can make some material really difficult. But that's not important right away, at least. So, you know, just surround yourself with all this, even if you feel like you don't understand a word. The websites listed here are excellent sources of music and movies. Uh, this whole list, browse around at your leisure. Don't forget about YouTube, obviously. That's, like, really the, the source. Um, and I really have to throw in a strong endorsement of this website, Folk Punjab, which contains some really great material, lots of excellent uh, music, and it even contains a lot of movies there. So don't miss out on all this stuff. 
All right, there it is. You now know about the courses, readers, dictionaries, newspapers, websites, music, and movies, all of those things which you can use to develop your Punjabi. Don't let anyone claim that this stuff doesn't exist. Speak up on Punjabi's behalf. You know, admittedly, there is a lot of room for modern tools, especially for the advanced students. Uh, but to that end, I myself am currently working on something. I'm, I'm basically writing a reader uh, which will help students understand the songs of 30 of Punjabi's most famous musicians. And I won't be selling it. That'll be uh, released online for free. Although you're going to have to wait for its release, I don't really think that's a problem because <laughs> I think I've given you enough to keep you busy for quite a while. And happy studying.